Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited because today is the start of my house plant tour by Genus series. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing three videos. My first one is today. It's gonna to be all of my cactus, desert plants, succulents, so forth. Then next week you can look forward to my Hoya tour and then we're gonna end it with the glorious Aeroid collection. I have equal parts of everything I'm coming to find out. Today we're gonna be in my basement area where most of my plants are, but we're also gonna venture upstairs because I do have my donkey tail up there in the kitchen window and then we have some cactus up there as well. I have three of the shelves from Ikea now and each one has a genus on it. And I, when I was setting it up, I was like, wow, I really do have kind of equal parts to my collection. Like some people's collections are very aeroid heavy, some people's are Hoya heavy, some are maybe cactus heavy if you live in the desert. At one point, mine was very cactus heavy, but I got into Hoya, I got into Lekka, and then, you know, I always had a special place in my heart for my aeroids. So I'm kind of like across the board now, and it's kind of fun to see how my houseplant tours have changed over the over the years. I was looking back, and the last time I did a full tour was when I was upstairs in my kitchen, and that was in 2021 when we first moved in. Another video that's coming soon, probably in April, will be plants that I've lost along the way, because I really want to watch that back and kind of see what plants I have still and what plants I don't have, and maybe my new plants that I got, you know? So just a little bit to look forward to in the coming weeks. Anyway, let's just jump right into it and get started with my cactus. I'm gonna call this my desert collection. Let's go. Here we have all of my desert plants on this shelf and we're gonna go over it uh, one by one. Starting in the back with my old man cactus. This was a gift from, from a friend. She literally sent me all three of these in the mail and they've gotten some sun damage from being outside over the past couple of years, but overall they're doing really well. I think they're gonna need a repot this year, but look at how fuzzy these are. Ooh, they're very deceiving because they have some crazy spines underneath that fuzziness. So you don't wanna touch them. <laughs> and keeping in the old cactus family, this is my old lady cactus or Mammillaria haniana. She is also very fuzzy, but you can see her spikes much more clear than the old man cactus. She's a little less deceiving but view from up top, she's pretty cool. This is a cactus that flowers pretty much all summer. It actually still has some spent blooms on it. They're just so beautiful. This is a type of mellow cactus. It's the Turk's cap cactus. It is this like silvery blue color, which I really love cactus that are this color. They're so cool. You can definitely see the spines on that. <laughs> It's fierce, it's definitely fierce. I don't think I've ever seen one of these in like a landscape in Arizona. I mean, I could have, maybe it was just extremely large. This color cactus is just so amazing. Back here we have a golden snake cactus. These are really popular amongst the desert landscape. The spines on this guy are also very fierce. You're just gonna wanna stay away from that. Um, I'm not big on uh, touching my cactus. I think we all know that. I have a fear of their spines. I still think that they're so cool, but this guy is fierce. I'm not really a big fan of the yellow spines. Oh, they kind of creep me out, but uh, it's cool. It's still cool. This is my Lophoceris marginatus, and it has started to grow kind of elongated. I wish it would have stayed short and stubby. Well, not short, but I wish it would have grown with a little bit more thickness. It kind of stretched out towards the light. It does really, really well outside. So that's why I like to bring it out in the summer months. But I do love this cactus and I can't wait for it to get much bigger than it is. This is a Pachypodium. It is a Madagascar palm and you can kind of, it looks like a palm tree with its little, uh, foliage that it pops out here. It usually pops out a lot more, so it'll look more like a palm tree. <laughs> 
But um, without that foliage, it's like really creepy looking. Look at how ugly that is. Oh, it looks so scary. But I love the wonky ones. So I've had this one for quite a few years now. It started off very small and it's gotten pretty large. This is a Politos Echeveria. And I, when I purchased it, it did have the blooms on it, but these are two new ones it put out. I think it just likes being under these grow lights. Flowers are so cute. They don't smell very much like anything, but they're still pretty. And I love looking at this from the top view because it's just so full. And I know this is gonna end up needing a repot probably by the end of the summer, but I love it. In the corner here is a Ceniceris Thurbii. And again, with the like orangey yellow spines, this one is a deeper green. It's kind of like, it looks like it's in the dark, but it is it is getting some light from up there. Um, but look at how scary those, those spines are, like, ouch. This guy is cool though. You can kind of tell like where I bring it in for the summer and where I bring it outside. <laughs> Um, this past summer though, it has been benefiting from the grow lights. It has not been getting leggy, so I can appreciate that. Look at my Velosa stealing the show. Get out of my shot. You're coming next week, sir. Here we have a Sirius Forbesii Spiralis. This is a Spiralis cactus and you can kind of see it starting to turn. It's such a juvenile plant. So I'm really hoping that in the summertime it will start to get a little bit bigger. I did have it outside last summer, but I got it in the middle of last summer. So hopefully it doubles in size. Okay, here's my silver sword. I've had this silver sword for years and I just have not repotted it. I'm pretty certain that it's root bound, but I love this cactus because I love the white spines. I mean, the top looks fuzzy. Let me try to get in here. Like it looks fuzzy, but it's definitely not. I think I'm gonna repot this this summer, see what the roots look like and put it in the next size up pot so it can it can get bigger. This is a Stenoceras prenosis and I could very well be pronouncing these names wrong, but they're all labeled. So if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll tell you what the plant was if you have any questions. But this has like a silvery hue as well. I'm trying to get a good, yeah, you can kind of see it there. Sorry, I'm, my light's adjusted for my, for my grow light shelves, but it's got like a silvery hue. It's so pretty. I love it so much. I recently got this and I just hope it makes it because the soil that it was in when I bought it was not good. It was very compacted. So I put it in this like airy mix. I literally just knocked off a piece of my peperomia. Cool. Way in the back here is my Euphorbia obesa. And these, <laughs> I like, I don't know what's going on, but this is how I always thought an obesa was supposed to look because it's it mimics like the shape of a baseball. And this is how this one looks. And I'm very confused. One is female, one is male. And I did that so I can possibly try to cross pollinate, but I've never, I've never attempted it before. It did bloom this past summer. It gets little flowers in the center, but like this is shooting off all these other little bases. Like they're all over the base. It's kind of crazy. I'm going to need to repot this because it hasn't been repotted since I got it. I want to say I bought these in Tucson like three years ago. Love those. This is my new sand dollar cactus. It's an astrophytum. And I love these because they are spineless cactus and these little fuzzy guys on the side are soft. So I can actually touch this cactus and like feel comfortable repotting it. <laughs> these are really cute. And I have yet to see one as like a full mature plant. I'm excited to see it grow. This Joseph's Coat prickly pear has a little bit of sun damage on it, but it has grown quite a bit. Like it has a new sprout up there. There's this new pad right in front here. And I love the markings on this one. It's got like a green variegation to it. It's super cute. Prickly pear um, in their natural environment are pretty invasive. So if you have them in your landscape, you have to kind of be careful that they don't take over your other landscape plants because they'll choke out the roots and just take over. I believe that uh, prickly pear are actually hardy, cold hardy in uh, the 
area I live in. I'm in Illinois in a zone 5B. So they, I think you just have to like cover them when we get snow, but I've had prickly pear outside and they've done fine uh, aside from getting root rot eventually, which was my fault. But if you have them in your landscape, you should be able to have them year round. I'm not a hundred percent sure if the prickly, if the, if the Joseph's coat is one of those. I'm not I'm not exactly sure on the different kinds of prickly pear, but from what I know, I think you can have them outside. This is a Sunita cactus. It has that like blue tint to it. I'm not sure of the nickname of this one, but I really like it. I'm kind of mad because I think it got some scale last summer. If you could see up top there, there's like a little chunk and it kind of like gave it a bruise, which sucks because when cactus get bruised, they kind of look a little ugly, but it's okay. It's still cute. Okay, this is a variegated gasteria or a little warty because it has like little bumps on it. Outside pieces here, like I guess they're leaves. I don't want to call them leaves because <laughs> they're not really leafy, but the outside pieces here are dead. Like I kind of have to take these off. They're spent, but it's getting new growth in the center there. You can kind of see a new piece coming in. This is new. This is new. So it's kind of like any other plant where the oldest leaves tend to get spent and fall off, but then it also puts up little pups. If you can see here, there's some new pieces coming in there. And then on this side, I just noticed there's a little piece there. Our little warty's happy. This is a barrel cactus and I love this plant to pot combo. I think it's super cute. The size is perfect and I think it just goes together so well. It's one of my favorites, but this is called a horse crippler. And Every time I say that, I get sad because I think of these things just growing in nature and they're taking down horses because of their spines. A lot of people don't like these because they kind of remind them of like fingernails. Let's see if I can zoom in here. They're, they are kind of gross. I do like the colors though. They have like vibrant pink orange colors to them and they, they do get sun stressed and they look even cooler. But I wouldn't want to see a horse getting taken out by one of these. <laughs> How awful. This is a piece of my elephant bush and actually it's not mine, it's my mom's. And it's a piece of hers from Arizona. She got this huge elephant bush when she lived out there and she wanted to bring the plant back. And we actually did, but we left it in our garage and it got some frost damage. So most of it died. I was able to save a piece of it and it's like tripled in size because the piece that I saved was like this big. <laughs> Well, actually it's like quadrupled in size then. So hopefully this will grow more in the summer months. This really benefits from being outside in the humidity, not necessarily really the humidity, but the heat, like it loves to be outdoors. So I'm excited to see what it does this summer. This is my jade plant and I got this from a friend of mine. And this plant is so funny because every time I see it kind of growing towards the light, I give it a little spin. <laughs> And it gets so mad at me, I'm sure. But like within a couple days, it'll be facing this way again. It's a really good way to even out your plants, <laughs> especially with, with this jade. Oh, I have to turn up the light here to show you this. The undersides of these leaves are so pretty. They're like a, almost like a maroon color there. Can you see that? Focus. It's really, really cool. I love how that looks. I don't know if it's sun stress from the grow lights, but these can get to be so huge, like giant bushes of these I've seen in people's homes. So I'm really excited for this to get bigger because it's just a gorgeous hardy plant and it's happy. It's so easy to care for too. This is a euphorbia. It's a variegated African milk tree and I love the markings on this. I recently picked this up. I have a few African milk trees and I've never seen one with these colors. The green variegation is so pretty. And once this starts shooting out like little arms, it's gonna be so cute. I also like the pot that it's in. I really kind of try to pay attention, really kind of try to. <laughs> Pay attention to the pots that I'm using because it's just, that's so cute. This is Cooper's Haworthia and I've had this for a long time. I just kind of kept it on my desk and really didn't care. It's not potted up in this pot, which I got thrifting actually. It's so pretty. 
It's actually in terracotta. I just have it placed in there. But I think I'm gonna plant this in a bigger pot and put it outside because it's getting leggy. Um, it's getting a little bit leggy, so I don't know. I think I'm gonna make it so that doesn't happen. But these are like, the, the leaves on these, if you've ever really looked at them, they look like they're filled with water. It's a really cool plant. My variegated string of hearts is back here. I'm gonna bring it down. Um, doesn't have tons of hearts on it. It's a little sparse, but this is like two vines wrapped up on the top here. I put them on the top of the soil so that maybe it'll grow aerial roots and kind of fill out on the top. I could always just take like a little bobby pin and push it down into the soil. But for right now, I just kind of wrapped it up and put it up there. This one is pretty long. I don't want to undo it, but it, like I said, it's just very sparse on top and I want it to fill out like my little flamingo. I don't remember where I got that. <laughs> Here is my experiment cactus, my Echinopsis tubiflora. This is in Lekka. It's a cactus that I put in Lekka quite some time ago. You can't like the roots are not growing through. Oh, a little bit. You could see a little bit of the growth there, but it is um, popping out some babies. Let's see if you can see, there's like a couple babies on the side there and then down in below there, you can kind of see it. So up top, it's happy. <laughs> I like this cash pot I have it in too, it's perfect. That's my apple leaf Deschidia. This is more of a succulent plant, so that's why I included it in, in this video but it, um, it's looking kind of weird up top. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's like some of the leaves are super dry and they have like, it almost looks like they're cracking. I don't know. Um, I think I'm gonna repot it. It's been in this pot for quite some time. Like this side looks healthy. Maybe I need to turn it. These leaves are huge actually. I think it needs a repot, but at one point the vines were so long and then they just started to get leggy, so I chopped them. This plant is really cool. The leaves are so thick. It almost reminds me of like a silver dollar or a Hoya. Like just, the leaves are just super thick and succulent-like. This plant up here I got from a friend. Let me see, I don't even know the name of it. I can't remember. It is a wing pod purslane umbraticola. Mm, interesting. It gives me succulent vibes. So that's why it's with my succulents. The leaves are super tiny, but they're also pretty thick. And the um, stems are like this bright pink color and they have this bright pink flower. There's a lot of spent flowers on there. I need to clean this up. I think that this is gonna look really pretty in like a basket in the summertime. I think it's a landscape plant. So I think it's gonna do great out there. Okay, here's another Turk's cap. I think I had another one up there, right? I think so. Um, this one's a little bit more short and stubby. Same thing with the like orangey, orangey spikes. Still a cool cactus though. Like when you think of cactus, I feel like people think of these. It's your basic cactus. <laughs> I just got this one. It's a Rebudia heliosa. And I thought that it was a grafted cactus. It, it looks like there's a euphorbia at the bottom and then a cactus on top. I'm not 100% sure. If you ever had one of these, let me know in the comments below. I don't know a lot about them. I literally just got it. I was repotting it and the spines on this, like there are spines on this, but they curl inward. So like you are able to touch it without getting a spine in your finger, unless there's like a rogue one. Gotta be careful. The pot that it's in though, classic. I picked these up from Target because I thought it was hilarious. For starters, okay, these are cactus growing kits. These are in a tin with no drain hole. And the instructions say that you don't need to repot them for three to five years. The false information that Target is giving blows my mind. This is why people can't be successful in keeping cactus in their home. Like <laughs> maybe growing them would be fine, but not for three to five years. I do this in every tour. I almost miss a plant, but I didn't. <laughs> this is my Peperomia rotundifolia, and it put out these crazy vines recently, but I think it needs to be repotted because it's losing some leaves. There's a couple leaves on the floor down there, but it has gotten so long and backlit. Here, look at it this way. It's like trailing all the way down. But some of the leaves, let's bump up the light here. Some of the leaves are kind of like yellowy. So, and like they're curled. I think they need to be a little bit 
straighter. It's just the, the pot size to the size of the plant. The, I'm sure it's root bound. I haven't repotted it in a long time. So I think I'm going to do that pretty soon actually. I almost forgot my string of pearls that I have here. This is definitely a desert plant. She thrives in the heat and in the sun. She put out this new vine not that long ago and um, I have her in this cute little terracotta pot. What do we think? <laughs> My mom's doing laundry upstairs, so if you hear a humming in the background, I apologize. Here is my Euphorbia abensinica, and it is such a big plant. I have it in this basket, but it's in soil with like just a rock uh, on top, and it is just huge. I mainly put the rock in there to prevent it from falling over, it's currently being propped up. Not that it needs it, but I just didn't want it to touch the wall by a very long bamboo stick. Long and strong bamboo stick. It's it's a big plant. I love it. It's so pretty. Then I have this San Severia whale fin here because it doesn't fit on any other shelf. And I know it's a San Severia. It's not a desert plant per se, but this thing thing is so cool guys i got this at costco for 25 bucks size comparison like that's my hand it's so huge and it's beautiful it's like the markings on it are so pretty i love it so much i have not repotted it it seems like it's happy in whatever medium this is i think it's like a cocoa cocoa coir cocoa chip cocoa peat well, I don't know. My guess is that it doesn't have a very significant root system. It's in a very small pot, so it's probably just like a cutting. So we're gonna leave it alone for a little while. This is my hedgehog cactus. Very skinny little guys. They have always been skinny, so I'm convinced that these are just like a skinny form. <laughs> because I had these outside every summer, and they're just these little tiny little twigs. They're so cool though. They, they started out really small, and they've gotten kind of big. And at first, like I said, I thought they were growing just leggy towards the light, but they spent their time in full sun and they still grow this way. So it's just how they grow. I really love to have my cactus in terracotta uh, with like a rock um, top dress. I just think it's just kind of mimics the look of the desert and I've always loved that look. Boom, my blue myrtle cactus. Now this is one that is actually an arm from a cactus that I have upstairs, which is, you know, the, the mama blue myrtle. So I'm gonna show that to you, but this came from Arizona. It was in my mom's landscape. It was super leggy for a long time. And then last summer it put out this nice little, little chunk. It has that like bluish color to it. So pretty. Here's another one of my African milk trees. This one's not variegated, but this has like the red tint to it and it has leaves on it still. It gets this foliage in the summertime but being down here, I actually had it directly under that grow light for a long time. It never lost its leaves, so it's pretty happy. Uh, it did get some sun damage. This is all sun damage from years past, but this is the cathedral. They call it the cathedral cactus. It's not a cactus, it's a euphorbia, but that thing is massive. Like I showed you my hand comparison to the whale fin. It's pretty big and I'm just excited for it to put out like new sprouts, new little arms and have it on the floor eventually and just have it be my height. I love big cactus and that's my goal for these like euphorbia on these cactus. Here's a photo of me, which I wanted to show in Arizona and I'm next to a Suaro like in the desert and I'm trying to like make it look like I'm leaning up against it, try to be cool, but you can't touch these things. Like it's illegal to touch these or to mess with them in any way. So I'm actually pretty far away from it, but like, look at how beautiful that is. Obviously I, that can't be in my house because it would crush through the ceiling, but I want plants like that, like just huge ceiling height in my house. Like that's, that's my dream. Okay. So now we're going to head up these stairs over my shoulder here and we're going to go to the kitchen and to the um, office area where I have some other cactus and there's other people up there. So there might be some noise, but just focus on me. Okay. Focus on me. It's hard to record in this house with lots of people. Let's go.
This is the Blue Myrtle Cactus from Arizona. It's Mama's. We kept it alive. I literally brought this home in my suitcase. I don't know how. Well, it's like tripled in size since then, but it's pretty big. Here's my donkey tails. This is the OG. This is the one that everybody that knows me talks about and I love it so much. It's gotten pretty full. I've had this for going on five years now. She's going strong. What are you doing? Always in your way. What a time. And do you remember my variegated Gasteria warty downstairs? This is mom's Gasteria little warty and it is huge. Like there's tons in this pot. And it did that from her just having it outside in the desert. I also forgot to mention that most of my cactus are in a very well draining soil with just a stone top dress, whether that be lava stone, pea gravel, something. Um, I just like the look of that. You can also amend it with lava stone too. So some of my cactus are amended with lava stone, but you just wanna make sure that the, the soil is very, very well draining. They like to be in porous, well draining soil. And water your cactus thoroughly. I actually bring them outside and when they're outside in the windy city, I water them every other day pretty much when it's dry out. If it rains, I just skip that day. When they're inside, usually for the winter months, I water them maybe once a month. That's really all they need because they go dormant in the, in the winter for the most part. Um, I have grow mats, but they're not on grow mats right now. I think I'll put them on grow mats in the fall, but they do also benefit from that warmth too, I think. They didn't grow as much this winter because I was moving and I came downstairs with all my plants and I just kind of took the grow mats up. The heat mats. Did I say grow mats? I meant heat mats. Anyways, guys, <laughs> thanks again. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments for me below. And if you wanna see more cactus content, let me know. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.